After I released my free preset for creating seamless video transitions in After Effects, just like this, a lot of you had the same response. Well, you asked and I'm answering. My preset is now a motion graphics template for Premiere Pro and you can download it for free right now. There's a link down in the description. While you're on my site, be sure to browse all my other downloads. There's a lot of great stuff in there from past videos as well as some paid tools and courses. So if you're ready to really dive into After Effects or finally learn how to use Figma, check those out too. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install and use this template in Premiere, as well as how I built the Mogurt inside of After Effects. Give this video a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're not already, and let's get into it. After you've downloaded the templates, open up Premiere and make sure that you have the Graphics Templates panel open. You can find that in the window menu. It used to be called Essential Graphics, now it's Graphics Templates. But then just navigate to those .mogurt files and click and drag them into the browser of that Graphics Template window, and that installs them into Premiere so you can use them in any project. Now, there are three different versions here, a fast, a slow, and a standard. And I did this very specifically. I'm gonna show you why inside of After Effects and how you can change the speed. But this is just so you have three quick options for whatever project you need. Standard is gonna be one second durations for the in and out transition. The way that we're gonna use this is by dragging it directly into our timeline. Actually, before I do that, let me show you the clip. This is the sample footage I'm gonna to use to show going from a full screen video down to a matted version and then coming back to the full screen. Riveting. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. I've already trimmed the start and end point. So that is a custom clip and we're gonna put it into the transition. So I'm gonna drag this out into my timeline and this is a dynamic length. So the in and out transitions for each one of these templates is going to be preserved even if I retime the entire clip. So I want this to be the entire length of the clip and actually no, I want it to start right when I say from full screen video down to a matted version. Full screen video down to a matted version. So right about there, that's where I want the start of my transition to be. So that's where I'll move the end point of this Mogurt to. And then let's actually trim this back so that it lines up with the end of that audio there. So it's gonna scale down and then back up. Now, obviously that's a placeholder image. I need to get this video into that Mogurt and I want it to be timed to that same in and out point. So I'm just going to grab my blade and I'm gonna cut here and here and then I'll select that clip and copy it because we're gonna paste it into the timeline for this Mogurt. And if I go over to the properties panel, this is where we can see the video source, but I can't get into that video source timeline until something has actually been added to it. And unfortunately, at this point, at least in Premiere, I can't click and drag a clip from the timeline to the properties panel. So what I need to do is go over to my project and drag a video into there. It doesn't matter what video it is, I just need it to create a sequence. This just happens to be the same clip that I'm using down here. But now that that video is plugged into the template, I can double click on it, and this is the video source for that Mogurt. It's not an actual sequence in my project. I can't change the resolution or frame rate or anything about that. It's just displaying what's being contained within the template. Since I had already copied that specific clip that I need, I can paste it right here and that will overwrite what was there. That's okay, I can delete the rest of that clip because I don't need it. I just need to make sure that I size this to the frame because as you can see, it's getting cropped off. My video's resolution is 2560 by 1440, but the timeline is 1920 by 1080 that it belongs to. So I need to scale this down to 75% in order to fill the frame. But now that that's in there, I can close it out and back in our main timeline, that video clip is now existing inside of that mat. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And if I play it back, screen video down to a matted version and then coming back to the full screen. You can see that it's very responsive. It plays back very quickly and it lines up exactly with my timeline, the clip underneath it. Now, one thing I wanna point out really quick is that this does not have any audio source and that's a limitation of having these protected regions that allow us to make this re-timing of the in and out points. You're not able to preserve or even use that audio even though we could see it inside of this video source. With that re-timing, the way that Mogurt's work in Premiere, it just doesn't preserve it. So that's why I build my sequences with the Moger directly on top of the clip that it belongs to so that that audio stays aligned. And obviously I don't wanna see this clip in the background. So what I'm gonna do is move my Mogurt up one track and then grab this dot grid background that I use sometimes. And now that's gonna show up as the background. Screen video down to a matted version and then coming back to the full screen. So that's how you use these Mogurts and really speed up your workflow, not needing to jump back to After Effects every time you wanna do one of these transitions. And the great thing about this being dynamic and responsive to whatever length you have is so long as the source clip that's inside of this video source is long enough, you can make this as long as you want to and it will hold on this matted version until the last second of that clip. 
All right, now let's take a look at the actual controls that we have over here. Obviously, the first one is the video source, the media replacement. I'm gonna collapse that. Next, we have full-sized controls. So if I go back to the start of this Mogurt, these controls will offset the position and scale of that full screen state. So I can shift this around. I can scale it up or down if I need to. If for some reason you need to reposition and scale that full screen state, that's how you do it. Next, we have the matte control. So this is the matted state of the video. Same kind of thing. We can reposition this, scale it up or down. We can also control the width and the height and have custom sizing for that. We can change the roundness. So if you don't want any roundness, you can make it sharp corners. Or if you want full roundness, we can turn the smoothness all the way down. And then if we just make these values symmetrical, so we'll say 1000 on the width and 1000 on the height, that's gonna be a perfect circle. I tend to like to add some smoothness so we can kind of get that squircle shape that I'm such a big fan of. You can really exaggerate that or keep it around 35, that's the default. Go down a little further, we also have this offset which shifts the mat independently from the video if you need to reposition that. And just keep in mind that whatever you set these values to, that's where it will transition to in this state. So it'll go back to that full screen state and then down to whatever you set these values to. All right, next up is the stroke section. So if you want a stroke, you can have that. If not, just uncheck it, it'll go away. But we have a width control to determine how large that should be. We have two different colors for a gradient stroke. If you don't want a gradient, you could just sample the first color and make them both the same. But if you do want that gradient, you have controls for where that first and second color's position are tied to. So color one is on the top left currently, color two is on the bottom right, but I could change that to bottom left and now it's a top down gradient. You can do any combination of those two position settings and just customize the gradient to be whatever you want it to be. But that's really it. All of the controls are the same between all three templates. The standard version is one second long on those transitions. The faster version is a little quicker and the slow one is just gonna be a little slower. All right, now let's jump into After Effects and I'll show you how I built these Mogurts and how you can modify the timing yourself and export a custom version. All right, this is the actual project file that I exported the Mogurts from. I'm gonna show you how it's set up. I have three different comps, one for the standard, fast and slow, and the only thing that's different is this transition progress sliders timing. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I've made a tutorial on how I set up this entire rig in After Effects using expressions, saving it as a preset and a template file. And this version of that preset is almost identical. I took out a few things like the cycling animation of the gradient and the glow because they did not translate well into Premiere. But otherwise, this is exactly the same. And if you wanna learn how I built it, just go watch that video. But this single transition progress slider is what's controlled that entire transition from full screen down to this matted version. And I have expression controllers for every single one of the properties that modifies everything that we saw inside of Premiere's Mogurt panel. So all I had to do to convert this from an After Effects project into a Mogurt was add all of these controls that I would use to modify things about the template inside of After Effects to the Essential Graphics panel. And this is where you design what that Mogurt looks like inside of Premiere. And I'm gonna show you really quickly what that process looks like. So I'm just gonna duplicate this standard one and we'll just call this one Demo double click into that. And if I come over to my essential graphics, I'm going to switch my primary comp to that one that I just made, Matt Transition Demo. Now all of the controls came over since that was just a duplicate comp. So I'm just gonna delete these really quickly and show you how to do this. So first of all, just open up the controls that you want to be added to the panel. And all you have to do is right click on the property that you wanna add and say, add property to essential graphics. And that pushes it right over matching the name of the property that it came from. So that's the full size position and this is the full size scale. So I'll just add that. And then I added these into a group inside of my Mogurt so that it's organized a little bit more and you can collapse it in Premiere if you don't need to see it. That can be done right here. Add formatting, change that to add group. And then we can call this full controls or full size controls, I think is what I called it before. And then we can drag these controls into there. So now these are going to affect the actual position and scale of that layer as if I was in the effect controls modifying those properties. So the essential graphics panel can actually be used in After Effects to just access specific properties within a comp very easily. There are some other really great benefits to it. I actually made an AE Genius video about it, which you should go watch because it can really speed up and maximize your performance inside of After Effects. 
Now, obviously I have a lot of controls for this rig. It could take a while to add one at a time into the essential graphics panel and I don't really wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is just make another group and I'll call this matte controls. And then I'm going to press E to bring up all of the properties in my layers panel. And we're gonna find just those matte controls right here and I'll expand all of them at once. Then I'll just make a selection while holding control or command on a Mac and select all of the properties I wanna add, right click on one of them and say add property to essential graphics. And now all of those just got moved into the properties panel. Now it didn't put them into the group, so I do have to do a little bit of work to get those in, but it's a lot quicker than adding them one at a time. Once you have them in, you can change the label for each one of these properties. So since these two controls are within the full size controls, I don't really need to say full position and full scale, and I don't need to say mat on each one of these properties. So you can rename these to be however descriptive as you want, and it'll be reflected inside of Premiere. Now, one other thing that I wanna point out is this edit range button on the side of these sliders. If I click on it, it's going to allow me to set limits on that slider, which will be reflected in Premiere as well. So if you need something to be a representation of a zero to 100% slider, like this smoothness slider, that's how I use it. You can set the limits there for the slider range, minimum and maximum values, as well as the default value. Whatever this value is in this column, that's gonna be the default value when you apply the Mogurt inside of Premiere. Now, in the case of this full size, scale, I wanted it to be able to go beyond 100 in case you need to scale that video source up. So that's why this one can go up to 200 scale. So make sure that you've customized this to be exactly the way that you want it. You can add in comments if you need to have some kind of a description. I think I said something like, these controls modify the matted state just so it's a little bit more apparent what's going on. So just add all of the controls that you need to your essential graphics, label them, set limits. And if you want to do media replacement to do that, I pre-composed this character icon and then just clicked and dragged the entire comp into the essential graphics panel. That's how you make a media replacement. So in Premiere, we'll be able to drag any kind of media we want into this field to replace the contents. Now for that responsiveness, the protected regions of the transition, I'll press you to bring up those keyframes. These blue markers, these highlights, that's how they're done. I'm just gonna remove them real quick and show you how I did them. Now, my standard speed is one second long. I took 10 frames off for the fast. I added 10 frames longer for the slow, but let's say that you want it to be even slower. Let's go 20 frames past a second, and we'll do the same thing over here. We'll back up 20 frames so that each one of these transitions is now one second and 20 frames long. It's gonna play back much slower now. All right, so let's say that's the timing we want. Now what I'll do is set my work area to that first set of keyframes range. So I'll just press N on the keyboard to set the end point of my work area, then right click on that work area bar and say create protected region from work area. And that's what will preserve that timing inside of Premiere, even if I change the in and out points. This section will not be stretched. I'll do the same thing over here. I'll set my work area to fit that section between those two keyframes, right click, create protected region, and now only this section of the comp is gonna be stretched when you change the timing of the in and out points inside of Premiere. The video itself, the media that you put into it won't be stretched, but the in and out transitions on that clip will always be whatever you've set in that protected region, assuming that the keyframes align with that marker. And once you're happy with everything about your setup and you've got all of your controls in here, just click the Export Motion Graphics Template button. It'll ask you to save the project. It'll ask you where you want to save it, which I suggest that you just save it right into the local templates folder because then it will show up in Premiere instantly. Click OK and it'll export and then that will show up inside of Premiere. But that's how I turn my After Effects preset into a motion graphics template for Premiere. Go ahead and download it. I hope you get a lot of use out of it. And let me know down in the comments if there are any other additional controls that you'd like to see. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.